What do you mean, what is Lotus Land? <laughs> I asked him what Lotus Land was, and obviously Lotus Land is Los Angeles, but... Now, yeah. why did you call it Lotus Land? I think that goes back to some writer of the 30s who dubbed it Lotus Land. Or maybe it was a typo and it was Lout's Land. Um, <laughs> Lout's Land. Lout's Landing, probably. Lout's, Lout's Landing, landing yes. that's what it was, and they got it all <clears throat> messed up. May I... Uh, Call may me Cher? I, may I call you Cher? Yes. I was, <laughs> how'd you know I was gonna say that? I don't know. Because everybody does. No, no, no. What does it say on your passport, come to think of it? It says Cher. And don't they say, um, pardon me, ma'am, but um, your, part of your name seems to be missing. Uh, I had one problem getting into Haiti. The man was very unhappy that I didn't have a last name and made me wait and went through all of my luggage and, and, and uh, ripped open a teddy bear that I was bringing back from Australia. I guess it, uh -huh. the name just kind of inspired him to look for other things. I wasn't really sure. Why didn't you say, well, Cher is my last name? No, no he, he didn't really care about anything. He just was very unhappy that I didn't have a last name because everyone who'd ever been to Tahiti had one. And he took it out on your teddy bear. Yes, and he took it out on my teddy bear. Why do I associate you with lots of balls? In, in, uh, may I rephrase? <laughs> Can we start this show over? No, I love it. Do you know what I'm referring All right, to? Now, if only if Please I can ask get you. me off of this <laughs> hook. Balls it, it, it of what? It has to do with magic. Uh, Slidini. Do you remember the thing we did once years ago? Yes. And Slidini did this great balls and cups and balls yes. thing with, with you. And, and suddenly... I'd rather sit there and watch you squirm because this I, is fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's lots of fun for me, too. You know how dumb you feel when you say something like that and realize that well over 80 people are watching? Right. <laughs> Very scary. Speaking of scary, uh -huh. here, here it comes, the inevitable question, but you're about to open on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Now, are your nerves shot about this? Is it frightening, all those images, the great white way, opening night and all that jazz? Um, it's, uh, this is a very strange thing to me. We've been doing this play now. I mean, or, we've been doing the play for over a week, and I understand that opening is, uh, I mean, I think that we could never open and be very successful in the play, but you have to open, and I think that's gonna make me very nervous. I probably won't be very good opening night. The, uh, the trick really, though, you're onto it, is to think of it as just another in the series That's, of... I mean, that's how it appears to me mm -hmm. that we play for an audience every night, now, and opening is just another audience, really. Yeah. I should explain, because of the phenomenon of live and tape, that as we sit here now... We probably will have You haven't been opened. Opened, opened yet, but... No. Um, as you see the show through the magic of television. Well, we will either will be open or closed. <laughs> Those seem to be the two alternatives, don't yeah, no, they? You I can't close halfway, can you? Uh, the other night, Suzanne Plachette did that play and it closed in one night. I really made, I had to go no. home after that night. I was really nervous and upset. That's gotta be a staggering blow, no matter how much people claim they can yeah, handle I, it. You know, you, you become emotionally involved in something and, and, uh, and it hurts you if, you know, if mm -hmm. it's not accepted. I mean, yeah. God knows that everyone has to go through that. It ha has happened to me a whole bunch of times. Yeah. But uh, I guess it is a nightmare. If they, whoever invented opening night ought to be shot. They ought to say, <laughs> right. you, know, you do previews, and on any night within the first week, the Times critic that can would come be, if he yes. wants to. I think to, that would be wonderful. It'd be a lot easier. Maybe next week, somebody else. Or can, even um, any night that you just didn't know about it. But to have everybody come opening night and... Yeah. Do, you know, do that. It's a, it's a little bit upsetting. And all those telegrams and flowers and all those things that are well meant, but you don't want them to remind you. I like doing the play, though. Up. I mean, the audiences have been wonderful. I mean, it's really been exciting. I would say it's about the most exciting thing that I can remember doing. It is a thrill, isn't it? I, I did a Broadway play some years ago, and I, I couldn't wait to get to the theater every night. It was just... There's nothing like it. You can stand there and say... Also, I'm, if you're not doing well, it's pretty terrifying, too. Like, a couple mm -hmm. of nights, we've had, like strange moments and you're just out there there's no retaking it starting over you just kind of have to sweat through it and and that's also really interesting well is it true that you've never stepped on a stage before in a play yes yeah because i'm sure much will be made of that but there's no reason to really not really i i, I mean you've been on I many felt stages very, yes i felt very comfortable and uh it, it's like playing a game to me and it, it you know it's like playing mm -hmm. yeah it is it, it's it's make-believe yeah, I, I always say, well, someone says, what are you doing at that time? I say, well, I'm pretending so-and-so, and everybody laughs, but that's how I feel. I mean, I'm just there doing it. I came to New York originally to take lessons um, to do a play. It didn't ever occur to me that while I was signing up to take lessons, I would get a play. Yeah, you have to be careful of getting work yeah, when yes. you don't want it. Uh, 
But you, you have studied acting. You've been on stages. You have presence, charisma, all I've, of that. I've, so it isn't as if you were. Some... I studied acting when I was 16 for about four months, and I came here. I had two lessons with Lee Strasberg before I got this play, and uh, I came here to do an audition for Joe Papp. And while I was doing the audition, I got a call from Bob Altman. And that was it. Strasberg's a fascinating enigma to everybody I, who I'm knows him. I'm crazy about him. Where did he start with you? Can you remember what his first observation he didn't, no, no, was? No. He you... didn't. You know what he said? He said, "You know too much," and walked by me. I mean, it was like, you know, someone said, "Cher's real interested in uh, in taking classes," and he said, he looked at me, he said, "You know too much," and just turned around and, and walked out of the room. He had to get something to eat. It was lunchtime, and uh, <laughs> and then that night I went to Anna Anna's house. That's his wife, and and mm -hmm. he was there, and uh, they just started telling old stories. And then the next day I just audited. I never really even got a chance to take classes by myself. I just audited the classes that he was giving, but I felt like I was learning a lot just by watching. And it isn't as if you came out of uh, a desk job to no. your first performing. Except uh, people have a very strange opinion. I'm sure that I must have contributed to this, that my uh, personal life somehow negates the fact that I might be talented, you know, because my, mm -hmm. so, I mean, so much has been written about, about what I've been doing after I've been working that a lot of people forget what it was that they liked about me originally, you know? What was, what is it that she does, you yeah. know? She gets I mean, married a lot or she, you know, she Did wears, they hold it against you that you might go to a disco or a party to unwind after? Someone said to me the other night, someone very close to me said, Cher, I don't want you to go um, to Studio 54 until after the play opens. And I said, why? And they said, well, because we want you to be serious. So I won't tell you the, fir the expletives that I said to him first, but after uh -huh. I got through telling him immediately off the top of my head what I thought of that idea, I said, you know, um, I, I am me, like it or not. You know, the people who like me and who like my work are going to like me no matter what, you know, if I go dancing or not, you know. And so I don't know I, I, if, if being on Broadway or if being serious means that you have to be dull or change your lifestyle, I guess I'll never be what it is that everybody wants me to be. When Henry Kissinger went to Studio 54, they didn't make him stop negotiating <laughs> or, or figure that he would go frivolously to right. the Middle East or whatever. I guess uh, I, I give the appearance of being a very frivolous person, but I think that I, uh, I, I'm capable of being very frivolous and being very uh, intense, and so I, I can just never quite stick with one too long. Yeah, and the one can relax you for the other. Thank you.